Hey there, Andrea Carvin here, occupational therapist, brain-based trainer, and life coach at Inner Sparks Rehab Gym and Spa. Today's topic is a quick trick for relieving stiffness in the shoulders and hands from a brain health approach. So the, let's talk about this. The problem, a lot of people who work with their hands is they experience pain and stiffness, and that is muscle fatigue. Here and here, as the day wears on, if you've experienced this, you may notice that your body starts to get tired, and then when your body is tired, what's happening with your posture? It starts to slump a little bit. Your hips start to slump. And when you feel your posture slump, your neck muscles, without you even realizing it, will start to tighten to try to help um, keep you going. And before you know it, everything is like a rock here. And as that starts to happen, so you're like a rock here and your shoulders are kind of in your ears, a lot of the weight of your body starts to fall into your hands. And that makes your hands not only be helping to hold your body up, but also doing all that nimble work. So of course they're gonna start to hurt. So it's a pattern. Um, if you've ever heard of the children's story, if you give a mouse a cookie, one thing leads to another and that leads to another. And before you know it, an interesting cycle is present. So this cycle of tension and fatigue creates movement compensation patterns that feel just tense, stiff, and hurt. In brain-based movement training, this whole process is understood in terms of blurring movement maps, where one thing is kind of taking over for another and none of the muscles are working efficiently doing what they're supposed to do because they're tired and you haven't necessarily learned what you need to learn to train your body for the duration of the movement and to move in a way that makes it um, less fatiguing and less painful for you. So here is an easy thing you can do to start to reverse this process and train your body better if you're finding that you're having these kinds of problems. First is, um, and I'm gonna pull a chair over to help demonstrate this. So, um, I mean, just get this straight. So, um, the first is to check your posture. So, we're sitting down. Actually, maybe I'll pull the chair back. We're sitting down and we're sitting up and we're doing our work. And then we're slowly starting to slump. So, what I encourage you to do is to bring your posture up very gently and breathe it up. Then start to breathe into your shoulder muscles. Not here, but here. And as you breathe up into your shoulder muscles, nice relaxing breaths. That's it. Right into here. you should start to notice some relaxation happening. Again, many of us breathe here and here and here and here when we're tense. And this starts to create this kind of forward tension pattern. So when we're wanting to relax a little bit more, we're gonna use a different part of our lungs and drive some um, nervous system communication into your back. So here, and here, start to imagine yourself breathing into that area. If that's a problem for you, you can even put your hands here and see what that feels like. What does it feel like to breathe up into your back as opposed to, okay. So I love using the breath. 
and try this. Do it for 30 seconds. Do it for five seconds. Whatever it takes to start to just bring that nice sense of relaxation. And there's some reasons in brain-based training that we do this. And, you know, I love brains. I don't know why. I just do. So um, this is why this works. So in brain health, what we're looking at is what helps our brain be healthier. And when we look at the breath, and many, many movement traditions really speak a lot about the breath, why is that? Because all movement happens in the brain, and oxygen is needed to fuel muscles and the brain. And what happens when you're tense? You're not getting good blood flow, and oxygen isn't getting into the places it needs to get into. So we can simply start to change that and have a healthier brain just by noticing our movement and breath. The second is um, the brain has maps for how things move in the body. And if we move better, our brain maps are better and they don't become blurred, which creates compensation patterns. So if you like this, and this kind of information is interesting to you, I would love to hear how this drill worked for you. Are you in your 40s, 50s, and 60s? Because this is a perfect time to start working on your brain health. If so, please subscribe because there's lots more tips on this channel. And my goal as an OT and life coach and brain-based trainer is to help you create healthier brains, um, stay active and pain-free. And always remember, you have the capacity to keep getting better and better your entire life. So thanks for listening, everybody. And I look forward to next time. Bye-bye.